Ever since I was a kid, I've been interested in, well, what is wisdom? And why is it called perennial? Meaning like a seed that comes back and grows after a season and disappears and returns. And I started to realize that, especially now in a time where there's overwhelm and so much going on, so much input, um, and it's very hard to navigate. As I've said, the last flood was water. This flood is information. So what do we do? How do we navigate it? And why don't we hear words like wisdom in this world? Or if we do, why do we have to find them for ourselves? And maybe that's the part that's important, that the noise distracts us. It captures our attention. The media distracts us. It, it inflames us in ways that really we wouldn't even know if we hadn't spent our time, our energy, investing in that storytelling. And so the question for me became, well, where do we honor the things that you can't find except where you're quiet, where you actually are allowing yourself to begin to trust that maybe when I think about my own body, I realize this is a work of genius. I can't figure out how to make one of these. I don't know how to create life, and yet I am life. So maybe the question there is not, how do I do this? But since this is done, how do I honor this? And if I honor it, what am I awakening in myself? And this becomes the perennial tradition, meaning that you could even look at life, and, and as you get older, you begin to think, because you're always optimistic, oh, this will lead to this, and it will evolve into that, and it seems to always fall on its face. In other words, the problems seem to persist in one way or another, and when you look at history, they seem to have always persisted. So maybe it's not to fix the problems. And maybe the exaggeration going on where we are beset with problems is a bit like a martial art test in terms of how do I learn what battles are mine and what battles am I engaging in that keep me away from this deeper quiet, this possibility that there is something in me that will have a conversation, but I must have a conversation with it, a type of etiquette that is not unavailable, but it's not available simply because one wants it. We have to create the conditions for it. And I rather feel that our time where there's so much outrage, so many things that are making everyone so very angry, that if we don't look at this personally, but look at it more as a type of weather condition that we are all experiencing one way or another, then it's not to fight the weather. It's not to fight the condition. It's to honor the sense that Am I constantly engaged in that problem? Or is it taking more of my energy because I can't stop thinking about it? And only we can create permission for ourselves to begin to use our energies differently. Part of the reason why I began the art in my studio and in my life was that decades ago, I began to recognize that I couldn't change the world by my outrage over politics or my agreement with certain people and my, my horror at others. So I thought, maybe I will see this not so much as a them and they, but myself. How am I able to actually bring something to the table? And so I created a place, my home has always been a place, where we've gotten together, as I call it, the gathering of the curious, to say, it won't be done for us. We must do it. And if we want others to do it for us by agreeing with them or disagreeing with them, then we're allowing ourselves to be in a type of child state, a state that says, if you are obedient to this thought form, then you will be on the winning side. You'll be part of the winning team. And yet, most lives can't really exist in that level because we have to deal with everything 24 hours a day. And so the question of wisdom became, how do I apply the slower rhythms, 
the deeper things like compassion and love. How do I actually let them be part of how I gauge the world, how I gauge the weather? And this is one of the great stories that has influenced everything that I've done. Meaning that if I couldn't change the world by telling it what to do, meaning also that I didn't know what to do, so why would I tell others what to do? If I feel certain things are wrong, it's not that they are wrong, it's what I am looking at that I feel is wrong. So if I recompose it according to what I believe, then it simply is like shouting at the ocean. It has no effect on anything, or shouting at the television, which has no effect on anything. But reclaiming that perennial wisdom, or the story that what we lack, yeah, a type of love of wisdom, a type of relationship with ourselves that does begin to honor that we live in a miraculous being, which is ourselves. I mean, do you know how you are alive or why you are you? You don't, any more than I do. And that's a mystery. But it's not a mystery that's meant to be solved. It's a mystery that's allowing us to actually say, I don't have to figure out how deep the ocean is or how high the sky is or how to travel to other planets, although those can be very interesting questions. But how do I actually find these planets inside of myself? How do I find this ocean inside of myself? How do I bring back all of my projections in that other world to a sense that here at least, I will attend the seed of what I find valuable. And I think that's the great gift of getting older, is you realize that many of the things you thought would add up to something didn't. But it's not that that was the problem. That was almost the prompt that said, if you can't change that, maybe you can honor it in a way that lets you feel at least here at least in this circumstance. I will be a cultivator. I will garden the qualities that I honor. So I think if I were to say anything to others, it would be think more like a gardener, plant the seeds of what allows you to feel the honor of being alive, and find the questions regarding, do I need to engage this battle? Do I need to enter in this conflict because so often that is a distraction from the things that could actually bring us some inner peace, some sense of value, some sense of inner dignity. Because the world, as we know, can tear you apart and all of its many furious voices can become a type of cacophony that makes it impossible to concentrate or to hold a thought in your head. But it's up to us. That's what perennial philosophy, wisdom teaches, that you are the universe. You are whole and holy. You are a consciousness that is of divine origins. And if we think this, if we even allow this, because it doesn't have to be true or not true any more than Mozart is true or not true. Music or love, these things are neither true nor false. They're more interesting than that. So maybe the more interesting part of ourselves isn't taking sides or knowing what we're against, but taking that feeling when we are against something and not giving into it, but pulling back from it and saying, ah, this was a distraction. Let me pay a different kind of attention. And like developing any muscle in the body, it's through constant returning to those questions. Not that we, I, I really believe that we have a sense that we get past things. You know, oh, I don't have to deal with that anymore. But when we look at our lives, we realize, no, you always have to deal with these things because you're always essentially having to navigate the same qualities on a different day that beset you in the day before. And only when we see this do we start to give up a sense of wanting to reach an endpoint, have a final goal. If only that would happen, then this would happen. And we become far more present in our own experience that actually does allow us to listen to this inner heart that says, I'm here, but I wait for you to turn the noise down inside of you, and I know it's hard, but if it weren't, you wouldn't realize that you are an art form of consciousness, meaning the difficulty is not 
against you as much as it's cultivating a unique capacity within you. And maybe that's wisdom, that we are being trained by the very things we are outraged by, how to handle our anger, how to handle our energy, and how to forgive others. And in forgiving others, forgive ourselves, because it's difficult. And nobody said it would be easy. I think that's the truth behind this world. Nobody said it'd be easy. So let's not try to get out of something. Let's try to make something out of what we find so difficult.